and cultivated tendencies to evil. All right, you hear that? Yeah. See, y'all been changed. Oh, yeah. He kills all that hereditary yeah. stuff. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's a lot of preaching about generational curses. Yeah. 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 You don't have to be a part of that. No. Amen. Amen. And to impress his own character upon his church. So the moment you receive Jesus Christ, he put his character on it. Let's go to Acts chapter 2. Very familiar. Oh, yes. Uh, y'all, God, boy, y'all want to see what God did with me. I'm going to hit you with something a little bit. Amen. Now you see why I'm in balance. Amen. Acts chapter 2. Now we saw Jesus telling you who he's going to bring. He's going to sit for another comfort. And this is at the moment that comfort arrived. You ready? Yes. Acts chapter 2. We're going to start at verse 1. Acts 2 and 1. And when the day of Pentecost did, yeah. was only come, they were all with one accord unified yeah. in one place. Yeah. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven yeah. as a rushing mighty wind. Yeah. And it filled all the house where yeah. they were yeah. sitting. Yeah. All yeah. Hallelujah. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues yeah. like as fire. And it sat upon yeah. each of them. Yeah. It didn't pick out the preacher. Yeah. It didn't pick out the deacon. Yeah. It didn't pick out the apostle. It sat on everybody. He didn't look at nobody more special than another. He sat on everybody. Anyway. <laughs> Woo, verse 4. <laughs> and they all, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them other. I'm not going into tongues. I'm going Presbyterian I'm not going into that. You don't even ask me questions about it. Okay? There's so many different facets of being baptized in the Holy Ghost. One of them is just get saved. All right. Amen. All right. And let God debate that. I like to tell people Amen. now, if it's not a heaven or hell issue, let's wait till we get to heaven and ask God and get the right answer. Because the only thing I'm concerned with is whether you're going to heaven or whether you're going to hell. Whether an angel flew, got wings, whether it was horns on Satan, or whether it was a unicorn, I can care less. But where your soul is going is what I'm Amen. 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 All right, let's jump to verse 17 of chapter 2. Now watch this. Same chapter, verse 17. And it, and it shall come to pass in the last days, said God, I will pour out my spirit. Yeah. Capital. Yeah. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Oh, and man. your sons and daughters. Yeah. Hello. Sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Let's keep going. And on my servants and on my handmaids I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. I will show wonder in heaven above. Stop there. The word wonder in the Hebrew means this. Watch this. Here's the Hebrew word. Here's the Hebrew word in Hebrew. Both hands. Every time you tell somebody, you know, I'm wondering at you, tell them, I'm over here. So when Jesus said, I'm bringing you a sign, sign means I'm sending you a signal, signal, and I'm sending you signs and wonders. I'm sending you a signal with more faith. Ain't that deep? So he will work for wonder, more faith. Wow, you a wonder. Let me think out more faith. Oh my goodness, I ain't not. Verse 18. And all my servants and all my handmaids, I will pour out in those days. Of my spirit and nature, all prophesy, verse 19, and I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath. Right. Blood and fire and vapor and smoke. Yeah. Oh my goodness, how far we go? Come on, come on. And the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord of the of the Lord come. Verse last verse. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be what? You shall be saved. Now watch this. Let's go to John chapter 2. Y'all know I do a lot of scripture. I come out of a house and do a lot of scripture. John chapter Because I don't like to be proven in on my say so. I like to be seen in the word. Amen. Amen. John chapter 2. Now this is going to be Jesus calling himself the temple. Some of you know the story. Yes. John chapter 2, start at verse 13. It's a lot of reading here, man. God gave us so much to do in the So if Jesus can call himself a temple, whatever he's 
saw the Father do, he did. Then he said, whatever he do, you won't do an even greater works. Amen. Amen. So, starting at verse 13. And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, ain't that funny? I want you to pay attention to went up to Jerusalem. Every time you see scripture, I'm, I'm jumping ahead of myself, but every time you see scripture about Jerusalem, they always going up. Yeah. Always. You ain't never heard them say they're going down. Yeah. Yeah. No matter what part of the earth you're at, you ain't going to No matter what part you're at, you got to go up. Because you know why? The word and the temple was up in Jerusalem. Every time you got to go worship, you had to go up. Every time you went to go learn the word, you had to go up. and sheep and doves, right? Oh, that might have been right next door. Good, good. Ox and sheep and doves and the charges of the money sitting. Yes. And when he had made a scourge of small ropes, he drove them all out of the temple. Yeah. Yeah. And the sheep yeah. and the oxen and poured out of the chambers of money and withdrew the table. And said unto them that sold doves, take these things hence, make not my father's house a house of what? Merchant. That's why I'm leaving church and business. <laughs> Hello. And his, and his disciples remembered that it was written, the seal of thine house uh, has eaten me up. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, what sign showest thou us unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? Jesus answered and said unto them, destroy what? This temple. Hello. And in three days, and in three days, I will raise it up. Destroy this temple. See, they thought he was talking about a building. See, that's why you're called the church, don't they? See, whoever was here, the Lord just now became the church. This room can turn into anything. But now all these churches are sitting in here. Why are you called the church? It means called out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's what the church is. That's why he said, forsake not the fellowship of one another. Churches together. Where the temple of the Holy Ghost is out. Where in whom you. Amen. Amen. Verse 20. Then said the Jews, 46 years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? But they spake of the temple of the body. Yes. But they spake of the temple of the body. Yes. Uh, okay, God. You know what? Oh, Father, help me in the name of Jesus. Yeah, Lord. How many of you, honestly, just now received the book? Amen. In their heart. Oh, just that one? That's a shame. But anyway, for the one, praise God. How many of you ever saw that movie called Ice Age? Now, Ice Age 2, the one with Queen Latina. Yeah. Right? Now, remember, they were walking around looking for Elf, and she had no identity. When you're a sinner, you have no identity. All right. You are not walking in your true identity of Christ. Right. You're walking in the identity of Satan. Right. Christ said, I'm coming to give you a new identity. So, in this movie, and I'm going to wake you up to show you who you truly are. So, in this movie, she was walking around being a man of elephant, thinking she was a possum. <laughs> Why? Because she was raised by possum. When you are raised in the world to understand and live a sin, that's who you're going to think you are. So, when the man of thought the whole world, he's trying to find a woman to mate with. Now they see Queen Latifah, who's playing the female elephant, but she's thinking she's a possum. Now she's hanging from the tree. She's even hiding behind a rock. She's even playing dead. Well, she's an elephant. Are you kidding me? So, when the Godfather came along, and stuck her head to the wall and said, see who you really are. Come on, Jesus. Woo! <laughs> see who you really are.
chapter 3. That God called you to this building. Are y'all getting anything out of what I'm saying? Amen. 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 First Corinthians chapter 3. Starting at verse 9. First Corinthians 3 verse 9. For we are laborers together with who? God. You are God's husbandry. That means you're God's field. You're the field that he can plant things. Do what he needs to do and let fruit come out of you. Come on then, yes. Amen, if you're willing. So you're God's husbandry. You are God's what? Field. You're God's what? Amen. Verse 10. Let's keep going. All right. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation in another building thereupon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stone, Every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a what? Reward. If a man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved. Yet so as by fire. I love that. See, God already knows the mistakes you make. God already knows the ones you're going to make that you don't even know. That's why I love him past prison. Amen. Verse 16. Ready? Know you not that you are the temple of God. And that spirit of God dwells in you. If any man defies. Oh, watch this. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God do what? Oh, who gonna do it? God. Not the devil. Who says God? God. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Amen. Keep going. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seem seem to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. Amen. that they're blaspheming the Holy Ghost. Now, blasphemy and the Holy Ghost, everybody got their own interpretation, but I'm going to give you the one that God gave me. Matter of fact, I'm going to let you see the scripture and let you decide for yourself. But blasphemy and the Holy Ghost, I thought it was somebody cursing or using a four-letter word. No, that's not blasphemy. I thought blasphemy was all these things, but watch this. I'm going to give you the meaning ahead of time. But blasphemy is a total denial of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. So anybody who has not accepted Jesus Christ or blasphemy, the Holy Ghost, why? Because you're not the temple of the Holy Ghost. And you haven't received Jesus. So when you don't receive Jesus, you have denied him. So you blasphemy the Holy Ghost. And you go to heaven. Amen? But let's look at it synoptically. Synoptic means three different points of view. You have the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But Matthew, Mark, and Luke are synoptic. Three different points of view. God? So let's go to Matthew first. Matthew 12. <coughs> Y'all gonna bear with me in a while, right? Okay. Amen. Amen. Uh, now, one of the things I like to tell people, people always tell me God forgives you for every sin. Here's one he doesn't. Amen. Here's one he will not forgive you for. Amen. Well, God forgave me, God did this. No. That's why we don't know a person's heart whether they received it or not. We heard your mouth move. But God knows the heart move. And I can't see what moved in your heart. You can smile at me all day. And